Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today we are going to be taking a rather interesting look at a new product from Sabrent. Now, uh, what this is, is an NVMe uh, add-in card, which means that you can fit four NVMe's into a single PCI Express slot. But although it's quite simple in its nature, it's also quite complicated as well, which is why we do need to uh, be very specific about its use, uses, but also very specific about its limitations as well. Now the add-in card itself isn't overly expensive. It comes in at $99, but obviously most of the investment is going to be with whatever drives that you want to put in it. <coughs> Now I can see a lot of you at home thinking this is going to be an amazing way for you to be able to add a lot of extra NVMe storage to your current system. But the problem, and this is where we do need to get uh, into the nitty gritty, is the fact it does require a 16 times lane. Now with most motherboards nowadays, especially like newer ones, in the majority of the market so z790 for example x670 they will normally only have one full full fat 16 times lane on the board and that's where your graphics card would go um, now if they do have lots of full length slots not all of the full length slots are 16 times but some of them let's say you have two wired for 16 some of those will then end up sharing bandwidth with, for argument's sake, your graphics card. So it can knock your graphics card down to eight times. Now you're going to need to look in the manual. Say you're gonna buy a new motherboard, just a little tip for you. If you're gonna buy a new motherboard, that's the one that I want. Go and download the manual off the manufacturer website and then have a look through the manual, scroll, th scroll through the PDF and look for the uh, block diagram and it will tell you how the lanes, the PCR Express lanes, are distributed. If you've already got the board, then some of you may get a bit confused with the fact that some of the PCR Express can be full length, but they're not wired completely as well. So I'm just going to show you this. Now it's a little bit of an unorthodox way of doing it, but I've got the test bench tipped over. And if we zoom in at that top visible um, PCR Express connector, if you look carefully, you can see that the um, Brass pins do go right to the very edge once it's refocused again. They do go right to the end. You can just see them there in the top. And if, so if you look carefully, you can see you can go right to the end. That is a full 16 times lane. Now underneath, despite the actual fitting for it being a 16 times lane, it's only a four times lane because you can see if you were to sort of like it's a quarter of the total amount of pins available. And then if we zoom out a little bit further, you can see the one underneath is eight. So you've got eight at the bottom, then four, and then 16 at the top. And this is something you do need to be very, very careful about. Uh, and even then, once you've done this, you do still need to look into the block diagram of your board to see how it um, uh, is laid out because you could have two of these wired for 16, um, but if you have one in each, they may actually be sharing the same amount of bandwidth. So it may still drop down to eight times. It sounds very complicated, but in reality, once you get there and get busy with it, it's not. So now you know the difference between the lanes. As you can see, I'm using the W790 ASRock board. It's the new crazy Sapphire Rapids. Uh, it's currently got the 56 core processor in it. Yes, the water cooling is very ghetto. And that's just because we needed to do some testing. I've actually done a air cooled review on this board. Uh, there is a water cooled update on the website now as well, but we're going to be going back because effectively I'm at the limits of the motherboard now not the power not the cooling i'm at the limits of the motherboard and i need a better board to be able to progress so that's the next thing that we're going to be doing just waiting on an asus workstation board to get here so i can overclock more so that's a brief update anyway i'm on a wz 90 board and i've still only got two full length 16 time slots now 
With the full 16 time slots in, you then go into the BIOS, turn on the, um, uh, the memory verification. Now, effectively, that then gives you the choice of going like four times, four times, four times, four times, or four times, four times, nothing, uh, eight times, for example. And it's just how it splits up the PCI Express. Now, if you uh, get all that on and you get it on, you'll see in the operating system that you can get access to the four drives. I just did very basic uh, software striped RAID so that we could see the performance. But before we get to performance, I do need to explain to you about the difference between the four times and the eight times. So when it was wired with this 16 times lane, you can pretty much imagine that the NVMEs take four lanes each, and if they're 16, they just go straight down into that. Now the problem was if you put it into an eight times lane, those two drives just were not seen by the operating system at all because it didn't have the lanes there to work with it. If you put it into a four times lane, it pretty much only saw the number one drive. So you need to put it into a full 16 times lane because there's no hub here. And if you look carefully, you can see with the way it just goes, you can see the little traces, they just go straight into the PCI Express. So if there isn't all of those wired on your board, you are not going to be able to even see the drive. So this is why you need to be very careful about the placement. Um, now, performance, as I said, did uh, striped, very basic RAID array, because at the end of the day, you guys at home are gonna decide whether you want RAID 6, RAID 5, maybe you want mirroring, maybe you're just going to go JBOD because that's one of the things you can do as well. JBOD, just a bunch of drives, you, well, you don't even need to do that with RAID, you can just leave it in the operating system and have access to each of the drives individually. It's going to be completely down to you how you want to do it, but this card, just so that you are aware, you can use it as a system boot drive as well. So one of the drives you can have your Windows on, the other three you can have RAID. How you set it up is completely up to you. Um, so, I did see 14 gigabytes a second with the drives that I have here, and they are the Rocket 4 Plus. So you do lose a little bit of uh, the overall performance, but that's pretty much going to be down to the fact it's software, there's not a dedicated RAID controller there to split it all out or, or anything. But 14 for one of these as an add-in, very easy, is pretty cool. You can go to the website to see the graphs for the Atto, Crystal Dismark, all that sort of stuff if you would like to see more of them. But one of the things I did find most interesting was the cooling. Now it does come with its own little fan, but if you have a look with the way that the fan works, it is just a hole in the heatsink. There's no like channels for the air or anything like that so pretty much it's just moving the air around underneath the base of the card now this is how i tested it in a very well it was the other way up and there's a plastic cover that goes over the top now with uh it there is a fan here but with, with that off and it was just with a little fan running it made a five degree difference over no fan at all so no fan at all you're looking at about 60 degrees for all of the drives after me battering them for ages. If you turn the little fan on, then you were looking at about 55 degrees. But most interesting was with a single 120 mil fan, not just, uh, not like it wasn't just on it, it was just like a thousand RPM, normal airflow. So if you had your case set up and you had a normal sort of like fan coming in the bottom, that at a thousand RPM took. 10 degrees off the temps you were looking at about 50 degrees it made the biggest difference now this little fan I have to say it's not as loud as i was expecting but once you've tuned into the fact it's on it's quite annoying thankfully there is a little switch on the back that you can turn it off and i would personally say if you've got decent airflow in your case and with a fan somewhere close to be pushing air up at it rather than just in the front. I think that is the best way for you to call this uh, add-in card rather than using the fan that's on board. I personally would not run it at all. And if I'm completely honest, what I really did wish was this section here. It is actually quite texturized. 
and you can see that there are big steps in it. If this was just smooth, I probably would have messed around with using a thermal epoxy to have put a water block on it and just done a basic cooling with it that way instead because I don't really see the point in the fan. So let's just say you had the fins on the outside, but then this bit in the middle was just uh, flat. I probably would have put a block on it, even if it was just kind of like a, a small one, just to take a little bit of the heat away. And I think that probably would have been a really cool way of going about it. It's actually got me wanting, because I'm an idiot, uh, to go into a machine shop and just to get them to machine this top bit flat for me so that I can then add something on. Because I'm not being funny, you could just bond on a 120 millimeter AIO that you've had in the cupboard for like three or four years and you didn't know what to do with it and, and it's just to help take that heat away. So 50 degrees is still not bad and when I say battering it it was literally there's a certain bit on uh, crystal disc mark which literally you, it's the one bit where it um, spikes the temps and I was just sat there pummeling it like literally running it, it you can turn it up to nine times uh, and I was literally like run it nine times run it nine times sat there for about 20 minutes half an hour just Abs not the sort of thing that you're going to be doing at home at all um, just to make sure I had completely got it hot and when I say that the drives were 60 degrees that heat sink had got pretty hot as well um, because obviously it's a big chunk of aluminium so once it has warmed up that's it okay so I don't think many of you at home with motherboard layouts the way that they have been recently are going to have a board that is going to be able to work with the full 16 times lane at all anyway. It's going to be those of you out there with a Xeon setup. Uh, maybe, let's say for argument's sake, some people out there may have like a godlike where they've got a PLX chip on it, which means it adds in extra PCI Express lanes onto something like a W, sorry, onto a Z690 or a Z790 or something like that. They are going to be the only boards where this might make sense so the fact that it is only a hundred pound it is definitely a sweetener and it is going to bring lots of people in like it did me but the actual reality of being able to feed it with enough pcr express lanes so you can see all four drives is going to be the deciding factor so please do homework remember what i said about looking for the metal pins Remember what I said about downloading the motherboard manual so that you can look at the block diagram for how they uh, distribute the PCR Express lanes. That's your homework to do before buying it. But if you tick all the boxes and then you're like, yes, I can run this, then the only decision you've got is really what drives you're going to put on it and how big you go. Because I was lucky enough to have four two terabyte drives, which I've pulled from test rigs and lost uh, data because at the end of the day, it was like I needed to um, put a raid on this. So there's a couple of test benches now that I need to do a restore on. Luckily, I did some backups, so it shouldn't take too long. But then you could be up to 14 gig a second with a basic setup. If you did it through the BIOS or you've yeah, there are a couple of other ways that you could go about it, but you have plenty of options. Although I'm still wondering whether for the most of you out there that are now like disappointed and like, oh, Tom, I'm not going to be able to run that. By the time you spent $100 on the card, by the time you spent many hundreds of dollars on the drives, should you have just saved your money and gone to the Brent in the first place and bought an eight terabyte single NVMe instead.